this is so I want to set up at some point some some music so we can hit go and actually have something we can sit here and listen to some music as we go and then go hi welcome to our first episode of the podcast this is uh, economic development what have we called this thing this is plugged in plugged in thank plugged you plugged in ck plugged in ck yeah, yeah that's uh, that's it so we'll have some music at some point but uh, it is episode one so we're learning. Uh, we're learning how to do this. Um, key thing here is to try to help uh, share some information, some news, that things that are happening in the community and going on. And uh, I will stop hitting the table. I just remember the microphone's right there, and every time I hit the table, it goes through. So stop doing that. Don't do that. Um, I'm Andrew Thompson, uh, Marketing Communications uh, here at uh, Chatham County Economic Development. You? Anthony Wilson, Economic Development Officer, Ward 6, Chatham. Uh, Spencer Prey, Economic Development Officer with Wards 3, 4, and 5. Very nice. All right. Um, it is, what's the date today? We're on the 14th of June, right? Right. Uh, Correct. So we are sort of summarizing up the this week, what's happened this week. Um, uh, there's been quite a, there's been a lot going on. It's been a very, very busy, very busy week. Very busy week. Um, let's start off with uh, uh, Wallaceburg. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few things that happen in Wallaceburg. Um, do you want to talk about the Chamber of Commerce? Sure. Uh, so this week, actually, we just put out a news release about uh, Jill uh, Misselbrook. She's now the new executive director for the Wallsburg Chamber. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Wallsburg and Area District, District Chamber of Commerce. Yep. And she's been with that organization for a little over a year now uh, in different roles. So they saw her accomplishments and what she's been able to bring to the organization. So recently, in April, she's been named as executive director. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like so far I've been able to work with her. She's been very collaborative on different projects and I continue to run into her all over the place. She's, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Yeah, she's very active in the community. So they've, they've got a great person there from what I've seen. Um, she was at an event today. We were over at uh, Southwest West Credit Union, uh, Southwest Regional Credit Union, because they're not just Wallaceburg. They're also up in Sarnia and around around the whole region. Um, they were celebrating 80 years. And you had the opportunity to get up and say a few words. Uh, yeah, I was uh, Tony. I, I guess I could say Tony put me on the spot. And, uh, you know, it was great. I think anytime once you have a crowd of people that was as big as what they had, mm-hmm. Uh, it really shows how a business has really contributed back to a community. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, 80 years is really a long time. So, you know, just to see the amount of support and the amount of support that their business has put back into the community, it was yeah. really nice and refreshing to hear what a good corporate citizen they've been, um, to hear all the different initiatives that they've put money towards. And it you can really tell that organizations that support the community the community supports the organization and one way of showing that is today actually tony was presented the spirit award for the wallsburg dragon boat races Mm -hmm. that had recently happened a few weeks ago so it was pretty nice they made the presentation uh it was kind of off the cuff. I don't think really anyone expected it, but at the same time, quite impressive. It really was. They, I, they were so humble, and they said they want they want to do so much more for the community, uh, and yet all of these people from in the community were stepping forward to give stories about how they've been giving back and all the wonderful things that they've done. Uh, so I, I found it, uh, I found it uh, a very positive event for that that type of uh, presentation. Yeah, and, you know, they had a, in speaking with that community relations, they had their own barbecue outside in which they had members of the public and had a nice cake cutting ceremony. And uh, Councillor Aaron Hall was there on behalf of Carmen McGregor, as well as Mayor Caniff, just to do a presentation on behalf of Chatham Kent. Um, It was well received. And I think pretty well the presentation in general was well received. If Kim Cooper's listening and watching, we had cake without you. And it was Just, good. <laughs> it was good. It was good. It was pretty good. Um, uh, into something a little more in the Chatham area, uh, Nurse Next Door. Ah, Nurse Next Door. Yes. What a great service Nurse Next Door is. So officially launching on June 12th. June 12th. Wednesday. Yep. Wednesday. I just know it was Wednesday. Uh, we've been working with Nurse Next Door since probably early April, myself uh, and Taylor Hughes, um, and really doing whatever we can to support them. Uh, but what can I say about them? Just two great people, Tina and Dakota Hodgson, uh, that own the business. Um, just such great people with caring hearts. Uh, so what they do is they offer care 
uh, for seniors or for anybody really, but in their own home so that, again, they don't have to move to nursing homes or long-term care homes, um, which again, is something that's so neat in our community, right? Mm -hmm. There's a long waiting list for beds in nursing homes and long-term care homes. And uh, if we can help, you know, seniors stay in their homes longer and, so and keeping them independent pretty well, absolutely. keeping them independent, yep. keeping them in familiar and comfortable settings of their own homes, uh, but doing it with a, a caring heart. So I know I was quoted in the Wallsburg paper as saying that these are people that I would recommend and refer to my family and friends, and they absolutely are. I would, you know, wholeheartedly recommend them to somebody that's within my family that needed that type of care. So I wish them all the best of luck. and. I mean, I won't be surprised in a year to hear that they're doing extremely well. And if I, I saw last night on their Facebook feed that they have just received back their, their car, which is a bright, hot pink oh, yeah. wrapped. You can't miss it. So if you see Nurse Next Door out in the street, it's it's a bright, hot pink car. It, yeah. It's pretty, uh, it, 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 you can't miss it. You no. just can't miss it. You can uh, see it from space. I think so. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Um, moving on, there's. Uh, I had a great opportunity to meet with Alex over at Country Garden <coughs> Market this week. Uh, Rosemary Montgomery and I went out and met with him. He's a... Um, we, we get asked this a lot. We get asked, so what happens with your summer company students once they finish up with the program? And a lot of the times things that, you know, they'll, they'll take what they've learned, they'll go on to other education opportunities. If they're in high school, they may go post-secondary. Um, others will take it right into careers and take it into jobs. Some, in Alex's case, he continues with his business. So he took that summer company program uh, about two years ago in the past year, he's gone to Starter Company, another program that we have here, and now he's launched out with. Uh, well, he's, he's launched out with his business a while ago, but he's he's launched out for the new season um, this year with uh, uh, baskets. It's weekly food baskets that go out to the community, all fresh produce. He grows everything. Uh, he's got a half acre lot, and he has quadrupled his production uh, since he started three years ago in the same amount of space. So he's quadrupled what he's getting in terms of yields. Uh, so he's researching this. He's, he's done phenomenal. He went to the University of Guelph uh, campus in Ridgetown. Uh, so he's knowledgeable. He's passionate. While he was at school full time, he was working on developing this business and working night shifts uh, at a local place around here to help pay for all of this. So, uh, you know, 22 years old, about that age extremely passionate uh, and, and so uh, so kind in, in conversations with him it's just a, just a nice person they've got a, he's got a spot out um, he's not just doing the food baskets he's always he's also got a uh, garden market uh, out on his location uh, in Chatham and he's going out to market so he's going out to the uh, uh, Wednesday market which has been renamed the weekly market or ooh, this is terrible i should know the name of it uh, yeah. it's formerly the wednesday market in in china that's what it's commonly known as um but uh, so he's he's doing great um so i'm happy about that excellent pass it over to who wants to take next story sure uh so i would say that i went to the dresden bia uh this week and they're just getting ramped up for their summer season actually they recently put up some new banners that reflect the downtown dresden so whether it's uh, past, uh, the, the, they're all sponsored by businesses, but mm -hmm. they all have images from our com from the community that really reflect uh, the downtown. So every time you're driving downtown Dresden, you might actually recognize some of the individuals that are on the banners cool. or a past photo. Um, so that's those were recently put up, and uh, when I was there, they passed along their thanks to Public Works as well as Integris Great. for their for their assistance in the manner. And you said they're all sponsored by the, lo the local businesses in Dresden, right? right. Yeah, okay. so each each business or family could put up a, a banner for a series of, okay. of years for the life of the banner. And um, another thing is too, is they're preparing for the Dresden uh, night market. So there's a lot of oh, big yeah. plans coming up with that. Um, so the, the organizers of the event were at the BIA meeting and they described a little bit more about what was going to be happening but a lot of those details will be later released on their social media cha that's channels. That's the summer night market, right? Right. Yeah, because they so, do a winter. Yes, they do a Christmas yeah, one. And Christmas. Yeah. Can't wait for yeah. that. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, the, yeah, so they, they have some pretty big plans coming up for that and uh, that's on August 17th, mm -hmm. Saturday, August 17th. It was, it was big last year. If I recall, there was 
eight or nine thousand people was that yeah right? it was it was yeah. quite packed i i don't think i've seen the downtown like that ever yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, you know like i've seen it busy but i haven't seen it that busy with wall-to-wall people so it was quite a positive event for that community good 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 Excellent. What have you got? Well, uh, in addition to visiting businesses, uh, one of uh, the key moments, I think, of the week is uh, I went to the annual general meeting for the Chatham-Kent Workforce Planning Board. Um, very heavily data-driven, uh, so normally not my cup of tea, if you will. However, the reason that I'm bringing it up is uh, the Chatham Workforce Planning Chatham-Kent Workforce Planning Board has done such a... Uh, amazing job over the last few years in terms of producing reports, data that helps us to do our jobs uh, within the community. Uh, some of the highlights this year is that they've increased or they've received an increased amount of funding so that they can do more projects because of the significant impact of the projects that they've been doing great. up to current. So uh, I w it was great to be part of that, to see the overall numbers um, and, and just again, the outreach that they were able to provide with those reports. So that was a big moment for me this week that uh, I wanted to share. Great. Definitely. Um, there's a, a few things that have gone on the website. I don't want to dive mm -hmm. into them too much uh, because they're all articles on, our, on the Invest CK website. Uh, under the current news area. One is an article about drone photography. Mm -hmm. And so I went out uh, and started looking into what has to happen in terms of drone photography. A lot of rules changed back in, in start of this month, June. Uh, you need pilot's license, different licenses for things. And um, it, it, because of that, it's made it a little more complex. And so there's an article on there uh, about that. Another article that it, uh, I want to bring forward is the fact that uh, our very own Kim Cooper, uh, he brought forward uh, a, a really great um, piece that goes on behind the scenes. So a lot of things, uh, economic development, are, are very you know out in the public in terms of grand openings or helping businesses launch and training and all of these different types of programs. Mm. But some of the things people don't realize is behind the scenes, we get a lot of phone calls in terms of, can you help us with this problem or this issue? Uh, and things that we don't generally want to discuss because they're private issues, right? Uh, and uh, some, some are opportunities, some are private opportunities in terms of things that are confidential. So people will approach us and say, I've got this great idea, but they don't want us to share that. So uh, this was a story that we could talk about, that we uh, were able to talk about how the municipality worked uh, with the business. And, and so it's, it's, been, it's been posted online. It's, uh, uh, I'm really, really happy with how that turned out because I think it gives a bit of that behind the scenes, you know, behind the velvet rope, as they say, sort Definitely. of uh, thing. So um, pass it over. You've got some events. Did you want to talk about what's going on? Yeah, there's there's uh, quite a lot of events that are going on from now until the end of uh, June that I wanted to touch on. So first and foremost, the RM uh, 40th anniversary slash retro fest. So June 21st to the 22nd. Uh, a lot of there's some big bands coming. Sam Roberts band is coming to Chatham Kent, um, and I believe that's on the Friday, which I believe is also the 21st. Uh, there's also in Thamesville the Threshing Festival, so June 21st to June 22nd. Uh, June 23rd, Boulevard of Dreams, uh, Erio Car Show uh, in mm -hmm. Erio. Uh, so a car buff like yourself might be Eerio. interested in something like that. Plus it's Eerio. Plus it's Eerio. A beach bum like myself might be interested in that. Uh, and I'm sure they'll have something for you too, Spain. <laughs> let's hope so. Yeah, let's hope <laughs> so. You've got Bothwell so. coming up, right? Yeah. So you've got yeah. the Bothwell car yeah. show. There you go. So, yeah. uh, and lastly, June 29th to the uh, July 1st is the Festival of Nations. Okay. Finally coming back to Chatham-Kent, brought by our fine mayor, uh, Mayor Caniff. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be one heck of a celebration as well. So uh, lots to do this summer, lots Absolutely. to do in Chatham-Kent, lots to do in June. And I want to talk a bit about uh, two things that are going on next week in terms of business-related activities. Although I have to say the RM, uh, it's a big celebration for them. So congratulations Absolutely. to RM. That's that's great. We we, we love supporting 40 years. businesses. 40 years. That's, that's fantastic. Um, one of the things going on next week is the Chatham-Kent uh, Chamber of Commerce is doing their uh, last business after hours for the summer. Uh, I believe that it's the last one until the new season later on this year. But uh, it's going to be over at the Kent. Uh, there's going to be some uh, 
some great things that are, are launched out there. Uh, I can't get into all the details right wink, now. Wink, nudge, nudge. But, but, but yeah, exactly. It's, Show uh, up. There, there's, there's, there's some interesting things that are happening out there. So um, uh, Chatham Kent Chamber of Commerce, that's on Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Starts uh, at 5 o'clock. Starts at 5. The, the next thing I want to mention is we have been holding uh, workforce, uh, supercharger workforce events. Yeah. We've been to Chatham, Wallaceburg, Wheatley, um, and now we're going to Tilbury. Uh, we were asked uh, that we had such popular demand at the other events to come out and, and, and go to Tilbury. Uh, we're currently up to, I believe, 12 businesses registered, which is, which is great. Fantastic. Um, uh, we're excited to see them in businesses of all size, uh, small business. We've got uh, uh, large employers. Um, all the information, again, is available on our website, theinvestck.ca. So if you want to go check it out and register, there's still some time because uh, that's next Friday. Friday. Um, and uh, so we'll come on out. And uh, there's a few more things going on in the calendar. We've got a calendar of events. Uh, again, it's on our website, theinvestck.ca. You can see all of these activities, other activities, other agencies. We try to post as much as possible, yeah. different BIAs. So. Yeah, and we we almost forgot to mention about our tourism ready seminar. So oh, uh, yeah. last our first pilot pro podcast, we mentioned that you know this is the time of year that people are getting amped up for our seasonal businesses. Well, mm -hmm. earlier this week we had our tourism ready yes. uh, seminar at True's uh, restaurant just here mm -hmm. in yeah. Chatham, and we it was kind of an intersection of tourism as well as economic development. Mm -hmm. So. We kind of put on a seminar hoping to uh, kind of energize and motivate our tourism-based businesses and those that operate similar to tourism. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, just to different things that they can look at and different uh, ways to use social media to their advantage, as well as, you know, kind of introduce ourselves to uh, different cross-sections of how we can help uh, your organization as well. Yeah, it was a great high level uh, with some tidbits of, and tricks and information and that sort of thing. Uh, I found out following the event, there, there was a few things. Uh, yeah. A couple of businesses came up to, to me afterwards and said that they absolutely loved it. They had some, mm. some suggestions for future programming, uh, which which we're going to implement. We're, we're definitely going to yeah. move those ones forward. Uh, I also found out because we had BDC and Community Future Development Corporation there presenting, uh, providing some information on funding. We share a building here and so... Immediately, I don't know, within an hour of coming back, uh, Donna, who is from Community Features, came out yeah. and said, "I already, I already had my first client out of the out of the meeting today." And so she came out and was thrilled that she's already able to help people from that meeting the same day, uh, which which I think is great news. And that's Absolutely. that's what this partnership's about uh, is bringing those people together. So uh, that was yeah. a success. Yeah, and yeah. the other thing too is uh, last night I attended the toner, or sorry, the Tony's? donor. What? <laughs> the Tonys? Oh, no, yeah, just the Tonys. Yeah. Uh, but no, I went to the IPM, the donor event. Donor event. So last year after our, the big IPM held out by uh, Pancor, we had a lot of community groups that put a lot of time mm -hmm. and effort into making sure that the event was a success. So last year we had over 70,000 people uh, come to the event within Chatham, Kent. So it really did help our bottom line across mm -hmm. the community. And this was an opportunity for all those community groups to, to come back and contribute. And this ceremony was more, essentially, it was the IPM giving money back to those community groups mm -hmm. that helped make it a success. So up, there was about $80,000 that was redistributed to over 70 organizations within our community. So it was really exciting last night to see a whole bunch of people there that did a lot of good. Uh, for their own clubs that will then get redistributed amongst their own communities. But just to, uh, I think it, out of all the 70 plus organizations, there was only a, a slight few that couldn't make it. So it was really a packed house. And we we got to see Toby Kobe one last time. <laughs> and uh, it, overall, last night's event was was a huge success. Were you dressed Excellent. up as Toby Kobe? Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> no? You shall oh, not know. Just no. never know. I'm like Mr. Dre or uh, the Pokeroo. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. 
Um, what I also mentioned that we had a war room session this week, which was uh, war rooms for, for those who don't know, they're very intimate uh, sessions in terms of training. So this session had three people uh, coming together with a trainer who were able to walk through the specifics of how their Google ads are set up. It was called Google Ads 2.0 was the session. And so rather than a, a large seminar where you just sort of gain some general knowledge, this was diving into each of their profiles, seeing what they're doing, ways to optimize uh, it. And I've heard, uh, I've chatted with two of the three so far and they, they were thrilled. They had a great time. Uh, they got some really good advice out of it. We've got more war rooms uh, coming up. I haven't posted them yet. They're gonna be online uh, soon, uh, along with our tech night. So we have a special tech night coming up because uh, there's a little thing that was shared the other day. I think it was called the business incubator. Um, <laughs> Chat about that. You were you were kind of at that meeting, weren't you? I was at that <laughs> meeting. Um, not sure when they're going to open. However, what I can tell you is that it's just an absolutely beautiful, modern, um, innovative space. It's uh, when I think of like a Google office or Apple, uh, you know, high tech, but also very modern. Uh, you know, very, there's a very deliberate modern feeling to the building, uh, which to me, which ju it just, I don't know, it, it creates innovation. It, mm -hmm. it uh, you know, the, they're just a really cool vibe in the place, you know, to, to break it down pretty plainly. But uh, got to tour that again and take a look at it. And it's just absolutely beautiful. And uh, I cannot wait. I think it's going to be such a blessing for Chatham Kent. Uh, especially for our youth, um, yeah, and not only for our youth, but I think our youth are the ones that are really going to, to take this and start their new businesses there and share, you know, in the clusters of, of other new businesses. And I, I just think it's such a blessing to Chatham Kent. What, what do you think about that, Mr. Spinney? Well, I, I definitely think it's progressive. And, uh, you know, the space, as you mentioned, to me, just kind of you look at it and it's almost like you're looking inside a magazine. Uh, it's a mixture yeah. of new and old, yes. but it's a it's a collaborative space that could be used for multiple functions. Um, you know, um, as I was there, I was kind of thinking, what could I do here? What could I see here? <laughs> and you know, the my imagination was kind of running wild with yeah. with what the potential of that space could be. So I'm very interested to learn more about what they have planned for it. But I think it's really encouraging. Uh, not just for the Chatham area, but for Chatham Kent as a whole. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, being out and seeing as we are boots on the street, we're seeing a lot of these innovative, especially tech companies. We have a lot of tech in Ch Chatham Kent. You know, it doesn't make the, the radar on a national scheme, but we have a lot of innovative businesses that are here and that have already been here for years. So it's going to be really exciting to see if there is a potential to uh, connect people to one another and you know it's a, it's really it looks like an ideal space i want to pick up on that theme of uh, you know tech companies that aren't are huge in the area i mean aside from tech savvy yes, doing yeah. wonderful things um, the part, part of the goal of this group is uh, and there'll be lots more information coming out soon but it's a, it they're being run as a nonprofit yes. uh, this is not a municipal um, uh, run organization this is independent and they've set themselves up as a nonprofit with the goal of helping these businesses with their with ideas with uh, it could be an early stage idea it could be somewhere along the line it's already been out there for a while but it needs uh, perhaps capital or needs uh, mentorship it needs these different things to scale accelerate it, it scale, right yeah. to scale it yeah. up uh, it they're they're not in this to to look at how they can pull money out of it they're in this to help that business become a generational 50 year business yes and that is a huge difference between some of these other business incubators that are out there which have perfectly good models in themselves but this is a different scale this is looking at how there can be a chatham kent solution and so uh i i can't say much more about what we know so far want but, to though what well, we want to but <laughs> uh, but but they're yeah this is going to be really exciting and ho hopefully what they will develop are some of those you know big names um that uh, that we see out there you know it'd be cool to have the next dropbox or the next you know yeah something like that that yeah. would come out of chatham kent yeah. um so yeah i look look forward to more information on that coming soon um we'll keep you posted 
I want to be uh, aware of time. This is supposed to be about half an hour long, and we are starting to run uh, run out of time on this one. As I said, there's a lot of news going on. Um, I'm going to jump over and simply ask if there's anything else you want to touch on at this moment for your points. Uh, have you got anything else? Got anything? Can't. Can't really think of anything. No, at you're this good. Point. Yeah. I always just like to mention that uh, you know if anybody's watching this and they have any sort of business questions provincial, municipal, federal, it doesn't matter. Again, we just want to yeah. so solidify the fact that we're here to help serve the community of Chatham-Kent, all areas of Chatham-Kent. Uh, so please, you know, reach out to us. Let us be the conduit for you. Let us do the running around on the back end to find solutions or assistance to solutions um, so that you can do your business. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it starts with a call or an email and uh, you know yeah. our website has been com completely redesigned to to better meet our end users so uh, there's a good chance that you'll find what you're looking for on there as well and be sure to subscribe to our news and events definitely yep. um, there's a lot more that we haven't discussed that we're actually putting on to our website so it's yeah. you know it, that's a great place to start but as Anthony said just give us a call yeah yeah, I think we touched on the highlights of this week. Um, next week is uh, gearing up to be another another busy one. We've got a few major events going on, so mm -hmm. that's going to be exciting. And uh, as you said, we've got a newsletter, so please uh, take, a, take a moment to register for that. It's on the website, investck.ca. Um, we're also very active on social media. I have been out blasting quite a few things uh, in terms of different activities uh, uh, celebrations that have been going on, things that we haven't even talked about here. Uh, there's there's so much going on. So anyhow, uh, we'll wrap things up for now. This has been the first episode of uh, Plugged, in, Plugged in, CK. in CK. Thank you. I'm going to get this. Uh, it's, <laughs> Stay classy, Chatham Kent. Stay, Stay plugged in. There you go. Jared, get well, well, Kim Cooper. There's Stuart. Stuart McFadden, everyone. <laughs>